What's up everyone? Have you ever wondered what's better? Photoshop for iPad or Affinity Photo for iPad? That's the question we're here to talk about today. You might be thinking, Ben, you should have made this video like a year ago when Photoshop for iPad came out. And you're totally right. I should have. I intended to. But the truth of the matter was that when Photoshop came out for the iPad, it was so horrendous that I just couldn't bring myself to actually make a video about it. And I know other people on the internet did. They told you it was really bad. But here's the thing. I thought at this point, I was like, okay, it's been almost a year. They keep saying that Photoshop for iPad is improving. Adobe keeps putting out updates for it. Keep saying that it's getting better. So I thought I owe it to you guys and to myself to actually go check it out again and to see if it's gotten any better and to see if it can now compete with Affinity Photo. And I've got bad news for you. It, it can't. It is still a total piece of garbage software. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the time lapse of me trying to edit the same photo in both programs. And you can judge for yourself. And you might be like, well, Ben, you don't like Adobe. So you tried to make your photo look bad. I didn't try to make my photo look bad. I did try to do as close to the same edits as I could with both programs so that it would look the same. And the truth is not that I don't like Adobe. I think Adobe has done great things for the design and photography world over the years. I think that right now they're really sitting on their laurels and they are not innovating the way they should and they are price gouging their customers. And you can see that they just aren't innovating by this program, right? If you download Photoshop for the iPad and if you have Creative Cloud, you'll be able to use the whole thing and it just, it just doesn't work well. So you'll see me go through, you'll see me edit. I'm editing this photo of the Grand Tetons and it's a raw photo and you'll see that the very first thing that happens is I go into Photoshop. I was going to do Photoshop first, give it the first shot at it and it can't edit a raw photo. Like it says it's incompatible. So I looked online to see what was compatible and yeah, Raw photos of all kinds, not even Adobe raw photos, are compatible with Adobe Photoshop, which is just, it's just ridiculous. And I think that's part of the problem with my photo. When it comes out, it looks bad because I wasn't able to edit the raw inside of Photoshop. So I had to take it to a finished photo, save it as a JPEG, and then bring it in. And of course, by that point, I've lost a bunch of the data, and I just can't do what I should do. Now you might say, well, Ben, you should have edited the raw in Lightroom first. Maybe that's true, like Lightroom is great for editing raw photos. I don't particularly like Lightroom on mobile that much, but you could edit a raw photo in it and it would do okay. But when I'm doing a photo composition, I don't wanna to have to go into Lightroom, edit the raw, and then bring it in. I'm gonna edit batches in Lightroom, which doesn't work very well on mobile, which is why I don't use it on mobile. I use Pixelmator Photo. So I couldn't edit the raw and I didn't do it in Lightroom. I just brought it into Affinity Photo and saved it out as a JPEG. And it was a high quality JPEG, big file, as best as I could have since I couldn't edit the raw. And it just turned out looking really bad. I don't know what it is. I don't know how Adobe can make great programs on the desktop and then they can't make great programs on the iPad. Because the programs on desktop are good, right? They're, yeah, they're sometimes slow and clunky, but they are good programs. They overcharge for them but they are good programs. And uh, here on the iPad, like it's just been nothing, right? It's been years. We've been had the iPad app for so long and we waited for literally years for Photoshop to come out. And it only came out when there was a pro. They announced it at the Apple event and then it didn't come out for a year. They were like, this is coming soon. They demoed it and then it didn't come out for a year. And when it did come out, it was so stripped down. They advertised it as real Photoshop. It was so stripped down. You just couldn't do anything with it. And that's why I didn't make this video a year ago. The other thing that you might say if you're a fan of Photoshop for iPad is say, well, Ben, you clearly know Affinity Photo better. And that's true. I know Affinity Photo on iPad better, but I know Photoshop on desktop very well. And so I should be able to transfer that knowledge because I know Affinity Photo on desktop very well. And I'm able to be able to transfer that knowledge right into Affinity Photo on iPad. And it just, it didn't translate. There's so many things missing from Photoshop and that's why I didn't try and do anything more complicated than this. I just tried to do a straight up photo edit, but I can bring the raw into Affinity Photo, edit the whole thing as a raw photo and then leave the develop persona and then go in and make my adjustments, make my composition. And in Photoshop, I couldn't do that. 
And then when I did the adjustments, I used a curves adjustment in both photos and the curves in Photoshop just weren't working very well. And then to test them out, I do a sky replacement. So I bring in a more dramatic sky from another place in the Grand Tetons and I bring that in to this photo. The selection in Photoshop was just so bad. I tried to use the quick selection tool. It just didn't work. <laughs> it just was like, I, I don't know. It, it couldn't see the edges. When I tried to refine it, it didn't work. So finally, I switched and I tried to do the subject select tool where you drag a box around it and then it tries to select. Now that worked better, but the edges were still weird. And one of the things Photoshop said is new that they just recently brought to it was refine edge. So I tried to refine the edge, didn't work super well, but it looked a lot better once I used that selection tool than using the quick selection tool. And I don't know how the quick selection tool could be so bad because the quick selection tool on desktop is great. And so I don't know how they messed it up on the iPad. I don't know why it wouldn't work. I could have talked to you guys through this, but the truth is the experience was so frustrating that you don't really want to hear what I have to say while I'm trying to work through it. So I'm just telling you now what my thoughts are and showing you some of what was going wrong. And I'll play the full time lapse for you, both photos. You can see them side by side, decide which one you like better. But I think it'll be pretty obvious. The one coming out of Affinity Photo is a lot better.
programs, they just don't compare yet. You can't compare Photoshop on iPad to Photoshop on desktop, but you can compare Affinity Photo to Photoshop on desktop because they do compare. They have basically the same feature sets in many ways. Now I know they don't have an animation timeline and some things like that, but in so many ways, Affinity Photo on iPad is so close to Affinity Photo on desktop and both of them are so close to Photoshop on desktop. And it's just really, it's almost really sad to see Adobe struggle this much to just bring a decent program to the iPad. And we're a year in and we're still missing super key features. In fact, like one of the first things you're greeted with when you download it is it tells you what's new and it tells you that there's these new things and then this, this thing's coming soon. They're still coming soon. We're a year in. And these are not crazy advanced features. These aren't like the animation features. These are like like paths and shapes. <laughs> and I just, I just started laughing because I just can't believe it that we are at this point where Adobe just cannot catch up. I think they thought that they would be able to step in to the mobile market at any point and just port their apps over and make them work. And that just has not been the case. We are still a year out from when Illustrator for iPad was announced. And I haven't heard anything about it yet. It's pretty much just like Photoshop. We're going to do this thing. And then radio silence from Adobe. Nothing coming out. I don't even think I've seen any teaser videos. So it's just, it's clunky. The interface is bad. You look for things, you can't find them. They reworked the whole interface. So you'd be like, well, hopefully that's a good thing. Hopefully there, it's a mobile first interface, but it doesn't seem to be. I would be happier if it still looked like Photoshop from the desktop because at least I would know where things were. At least I would be able to navigate. Anyway, so it's a bit of a rant, guys. It wasn't intended to be this way because I had heard that Photoshop had made improvements and I thought that this would be a more apples to apples comparison, but it just, it didn't turn out that way. And so you go ahead, you take a look, you decide for yourself. Go ahead, drop in the comments, tell me which program do you like better, Affinity Photo on iPad or Photoshop on iPad? Which one do you think is better? We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.